Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast from your host and Pearl Dane, the one, the only master propaganda here of Psych Defender of the Fatherland off here to a 1v1 own fame and will approach. In the north, it is Kalyan fighting for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland. Here with the. Oh, let's just go with 78th Storm Grenadier Division here with mechanized elite troops and encirclement. In the south, it is Chief and Katze fighting for the Red Army, the Soviet Union, Comrade Stalin. Here with the 6th Guards Mechanized Corps with Armored Assault Tactics, Soviet Industry, and Mechanized Support. Oh my. So, off to an interesting side. It's a collection of commanders here between both commander sides, both players. Pleh, that was really a mess up there. But, anyways. As always, a big hearty thanks though to my Patreon supporters, one for people, one and all. My own company here is there. Other people can join the Patreon Patreon, or they can donate via PayPal. Links in the description would help, of course, support the worth it quite nicely. You can also, you know, just pre-order companies. If you're going to do that via the link in the comment section, use the code Duke three G or caps, except for the three, of course. And finally, you know, comment, like, share, subscribe. You know, help spread the video up via the YouTube algorithms a bit more. So, then these things happen here. Pioneers for the country up close first out. They're the pioneers and are after a great start here. Already. Dietmar and Wilhelm are dead there, and there we go. Jürgen drops into the pixelated after as well. They've cut good up. Yeah, full wipe here on Canyon early game there. Great kill of Chisun Katze. Really slows down how much map control here can get going in the early game. Plus, of course, force him to replace him because otherwise he's not going to be doing anything in terms of tech either, which is why losing the Pioneers of the Wehrmacht typically hurts a lot more because, you know, really can't get around them. Of course, the Soviets also hit there for some of the Americans, the Brits, and the Obel Commerce for some comparison. Don't really lose a lot there in the sense they don't really need them to build. So, second gear squad here for Chiefs and Katza. Right on the Southern Field Point team, machine wing about. We'll come to front of the machine gun here. Basically, again, a bit of the tricky with such small buildings. It becomes very easy for the machine gun to get outmaneuvered in situations because you can just keep switching from window to window a lot of the time, of course. You might get unlucky or lucky, depending on perspective, but a lot of the other time, just, you know, get the machine and doing a bagger all day. There you go, Gunners Ranch support team. Meanwhile, as this little game is, you know, going on there, meanwhile, Chiefs and Cuts Grand points up north and in south. He does help to get pushed back, but again, bought himself some valuable time here. Third Gunners got ever counting and the German army. Certainly, again, interesting in the encirclement and mechanized elite troops. Certainly an emphasis on Stormtroopers possibly here. I'm certainly saying a map like this, Stormtroopers could be quite handy with their MP40s and their intense DPS at close range. So could be something here for Canyon to want to invest into versus Chiefs and Cats in the Red Army. Up north and using forts. And he doesn't quite have anything this similar there. Like, you know, there's no shock troopers or submachine upgrades to go for to like, you know, in that sense, try and dominate the close quarters. So could be tech, but I'll always going to need some pines at some point in the near future. We'll have to see, of course, what direction it can and goes for. Fourth gun is caught here. All right, gun is here. Could get a wipe in conscripts, which certainly would help make up for Canyon's loss of the pioneers in the early game by depleting here Chiefs and Carter's infantry reserves. And there we go, does score the wipe there. Very nice serve there for Canyon. Of course, still doesn't. I mean, it mo in some regards, it does make up for the loss of the conscripts. Of course, depletes Chiefs and Carter's front end forces. You know, not bad, not bad here. Up north here, pushing forward to the flame first. Going to flank around the machine gun there. Cheeky. Up north, gun is busy there. One gun is from forward. See, in the south here, constantly being steady bled out. The gun are paying a high price for it in the process. And there you go. And you need making the attempt to machine swinging around there. Repositioning the next window there. But the flame is already in the range. And Kalyan realizes, of course, which way the wind is blowing. In this case, which you know direction the flame is going. And just retreats them before losing the MD-42. Pani's on the way for Kalyan. No tech yet in the south. They're going to be almost got another come scored here. That would be a huge blow here to Chiefs and Cuts. But no. Fortunately, it does mildly favor him. We also got some quick healing here from the Gundis. Low on health, but still three men. So first aid kit that could still keep them going for a bit longer here. So I think that's a smart investment there. Pani is ready. Still need tech up north here. Gundis been engaged with the Gundis there by the northern fuel point. A lot of action here and there on the flanks. Center is not seeing a lot of action there. Very good in a sense. Indicates we're less likely just to see pointless and mindless meat grinder action here. Uses the gun to use here. 
More troops are running into the south of the Gundy Escort. That does narrowly survive. But it's certainly been a bit of a blow there to Kalyan to lose a veteran to two Gundy Escort here. More troops pushing forward in Gunny Escort. Right, there you go. We get the factor again, what I call the nine man in Gunny Escort. Because again, they can just use nearby control Corps to like pull them up to larger numbers. This effectively means the engineers there are suddenly, you know, much larger in quality than or quantity than they always normally would be. A bit of a distinct advantage here, these Soviets, in a sense, have their effects to the mergeability. North Eagle is the point here. We got machine gun sitting out there. Still on attack for Kalyan. And there you go. Chieftain Cutter goes for mechanized support tactics with anti tank and ambush tactics. Gas Rod Mint, of course, in which case we've got one squad there. Mark vehicle. IL 2 Stummik strafing runs and the ISU 152. And Gnees, by the way, have been wired off inside the building. So that actually means the Gnees squad will get wiped. Is and they cannot escape for this. They're just going to get caught there. So there you go. Nice wipe here for Kali now. That's two wipes in Chiefs and Katsu. Contra squad and Gnees squad. In comparison, only one Pioneer squad. So starting to look better here for Kali, but there is still no tech up for Kali. Which is down to to look a bit more concerning, though it's getting the full advantage there. Gatwing Fords, DP lock machines being added. Might see some more Gatwing for Chieftain Kata to make up for these losses. Try and hit back at the Germans harder with some more elite socialist infantry. To carry the banner of the Soviet Union against the fascists under Kalyan's command. And he proceeds to then walk into the trap as well. Didn't he like set up the trap or did he forget about it? By the way, that's a bit awkward. <laughs> but yeah. Again, it is a track you don't see as much nowadays, but it used to be somewhat public again, just let out this triangle of barbed wire at like the entrance or exit. So now Kalyan ends up losing his machine gun. Yeah. There you go, that's a full machine gun wipe there. Kalyan by West gone from circlement. Spicy. But I think it's also a good command if you know how to use it. We've got ambush training, stormtroopers. Break supply line, break through, and close the pocket. Back at reinforcing healing. Finding him take that for Kalyan, but losing the machine in there definitely was a really great kill there for Chiefs and Katza. Yeah. But like, or was it Ka Chiefs and Katza? I think it was. But again, then there was him that gets his unit stuck there. It's like, you know, no matter, like, you know, who put it up, one of them ends up looking a bit like an idiot there. Well, an idiot, but certainly a bit like a clown there on getting the unit stuck. And like, Kalyan apparently just didn't notice it, so he afterwards got his machine gun stuck there, so... Yeah, I don't know. Definitely a very, very, very uncomfortable situation with both players involved in the end. South Eagle is... More tortoise and Dactic is in the there. Southern Field been grabbed as well there by Chiefs and Katza. There we go, Armored Car for Kalyan. No Stormtroopers. Could have been a good addition to quickly get out, honestly, here. Though, of course, the Armored Car is... A nice pick as well. We got light machine guns and two gun discords here. Significantly boosting Kalyan's anti infantry firepower there, of course. Armored car almost done. Back here, base with Chiefs and Cards. We do not have tech, and there you go. He needs dodging a rifle grenade here from Kalyan's gun deers. In the south here, Pioneers were going to support going after the country by the sun of the fuel point, trying to keep that fuel out of Chiefs and Cards' hands. Pioneers are definitely paying the price here and needs to treat them for the losers. Another Pioneer squad here to the Soviets. That's going to be quite painful there for Kalyan. In this case, the sandbags turn out to be set up in such an angle that the Gundies, no matter which side of the cover they're trying to set up on, can kind of actually hit them easily while still being in heavy cover. Though, obviously, they need to slightly shift to get a good position here, but still a bit awkward there for Chiefs and Kaz. They more or less manage that. In fact, there's going to be a possible another wipe in Chiefs and Kaz. There you go, and cover rushing in. And gets another wipe. The Chiefs and cut it down to two conscript squads. Well, actually, two infantry squads, of course. One of them is a guard squad. So that's two conscript wipes now here on Chiefs and Katza, who definitely needs to, uh, well, turn things around somehow because this is steadily turning into Kalyan's fight here. I imagine here part of Chiefs and Katza's plan will be to rush out T79 versus Kalyan and looks to turn the tide with the light tank. Mines only up north are plenty there for Chiefs and Cards, who does have most of the map despite otherwise suffering losses and not having a lot of interest in the field. They're still managing some pretty solid map control there, so thumbs up to Chiefs and Cards. Honey saying Norfolk's, Mines with the kits on the way. Probably I need more armored cars or a pack 40 deal with the potential T70. Storms was called in in a pinch, they can be equipped with the Panzer Shrek's. 
So not a bad idea. Does also push Mark to five Infinity Scorch, which could be an overall handle, give him some supreme map control here. Versus Chiefs and Cards. But in the Pinch again, you can equip them with a Panther Shrek. Do you like Ketson? Panzer Buxer. T76 better there for Chiefs and Cats and the Red Army. He is currently in charge here on Kalyan Center Possessions of the 78th Sturm Grenadier Division, which was a sort of experimental infantry division that was much more heavily equipped compared to your average infantry division, with all the gunners be equipped to the level of like basically Panzer Grenadiers with a higher number of like machine guns. But they also had like mortars and packs on a company level, I believe, which was very rare as well. And finally, they had an entire Stug Brigade directly attached to the division. Meaning they had access to both Stug 3Gs and Stug 42s. And quite a large number of them. So, it was a fairly interesting division in that sense. It's being pushed back here. Mine spotted. Almost set off there by the T-70, but narrowly gets away with it. Lucky there for Kalyan. Pack 40 is on the way now. Storms are busy up north. No Panzer Shrek's there. No Raketan. Panzer Buxi, I'm accompanying the T-70 here. Guards from there could be surprised by the murdered. And of course, within Circum, you can also have your Storm to Sprint, which is actually a pretty powerful combo with those MP-40s, since they really do a lot of damage up close. Being able to close the distance on certain units rapidly with that can really give you an edge from time to time. More comes there for Chiefs and Katza. Partly was honestly expecting more Guardsmen here, but... Uh, Chiefs and Katza clearly believes in the power of the front of it. And there you go, and you need to catch anything. Storms up north, there you go, Assault and Hold. That's a tactical advance, nonsense. There we go, pushing back the Guineas. Chiefs are getting panned first in the center. Definitely not a great spot to be in for Chiefs and Katza, but fortunately for him, Kalyan doesn't quite have the forces to immediately finish it off here, though of course he may try. So, continuing to block here, or at least pretend to block. Obviously here, the idea I think by Chiefs and Katza is to like, try and spook Kalyan into being more cautious here. Trying to make him think there's anti-tank grenades in this case, though. Kalyan clearly didn't buy into that. Otto, I think it's just having on dirty socks, not anti-tank grenades. How do you get socks that dirty? Don't think about it, Otto. Don't think about it. Armored car for the T-70 is a pretty good trait there for Kalyan. Up north, they're pumping ground by the Guardsmen. Breaking the sandbags with the pack 40. Another T7 of the Pachisa and Katza. An interesting choice here. Risky in some regards, but at the same time, T7 and Katza in the lot is behind. So using this gap to like try and switch in, sneak in another light tank versus opponent could perhaps be the way to push forward. But at the same time, arguably, taking out for fast drama might just be the wise idea. And I think that's also the conclusion he came to there. I mean, Again, I don't think they said everyone going for the second T-70, but it's certainly risky and probably should have been done sooner than while he still had the first one around here. Storms recharging at the now finding, or, oh, you know, hold down in the sense guards from there we go, going up close with the assault and hold, or tactical advance there. Blah. Ripping through the guards from there, pushing them back. I don't want to call that assault and hold, mostly because I probably play a lot of German infantry and I do like to use assault and hold alongside my storm tools, but it also benefits and in fact overlaps quite nicely with tactical advance by the way. You can really land some wipes quickly with that combo. Plus the assault and hold can help offset some of the penalties you always get in your stormtroopers when you use a tactical advance. I'll wait mechanized I'm a company up for Chiefs and Katza and the Red Army in the south there. Conscripts are advancing on the southern fuel point again. Conscripts base in the center. Supoma call and a fast Panzer IV here. I think would be an excellent addition here for Kalyan. Chiefs and Katza lightly be pushing here for ET-34 from 6. Swiftly seeking up the southern territory there. Lots of sandbags down fast as well. Thumbs up. Northern points been claimed for Kalyan and the German Army. The 78th Sturm Grenadier Division. Could be shattered during Operation Back Ration, but then rebuilt as a full Grenadier Division. Of course, he still retained that part of the Storm Grenadier Division, as it kind of got the weird name of 78th Full Storm Grenadier Division, which makes you almost think it's like, you know, Full Storm Division, but it was a Full Grenadier Division that's just still carried the title of Storm Grenadier as well. A bit awkward, really. To put it gently. Yeah, so Palmer coin to Pantafort would be an excellent choice of a Kalyan and the German army. Maxim here for Chiefs and Katze. 
points have been grabbed. Got the stormtroopers laying down booby traps. Thumbs up. Germans were great users of booby traps. Used a wide variety of them. And would also lay up some at times fairly complex patterns. Like for example in some cases. They actually set up booby traps. Anticipating the movement of any infantry. And they say hit mines. And then they just have booby trap nearby cover and ditches. So like when they jump for cover. Boom. Second saves like booby traps would go off. For example of mines. And use the gas and amp, quickly push back. Flare goes off there, Otto drops dead. So Palmer caught the fun here for Kalyan, so good. Got the max and the gun is in the centre. North here, another push here, Storms was hiding out. Four kills, close to John. We got the. the cold, I hit the dirt. But you're in a fighting position, I think it is called. Cover there shattered again here. And up north here, Stormtroopers there trying to wait for the right time to strike at the engineers there. There we go. MP4 just going ham there, and the engineers pushing them back. Gun is the. Okay, the Bart wire has been cleared out this time. It would have been awkward there, like counting up losing another unit to that Bart wire trap. Grenade here, but quickly dodge the assault troops. In fact, they're already way past the grenade. That again, sprint on Stormtroopers is a really handy element there. But because a few people use and circumvent, you rarely get to see it. But it's a really powerful combo, honestly. Come to the right in the center of the Pioneers. Come to you see map control wise. Despite these, you know, setbacks here, Chiefs and Cuts are still managing reasonably good, though. They two points wise, he is far behind. But there you go. T 34 some six on the way there. Pantafold, those odds on the way here. Storms were popping assault and tactical advance here. But I definitely think this was not a well advised tactical advance there. Too low on health there. And security, cheese and cuts, and easy kill on the stormtroopers. Quite the waste of manpower experience there for Kalyan. Quite the waste. Using Norfolk's T-34-6. Two-thirds of the way done here for cheese and cuts. We've got Kalyan here with a Panzer IV, the Panzerkampfwagenfeer. So then from a nearby Panzer Division, I imagine. Grab this on the fuel point back. Which do here? Could go for stormtroopers. Could go for panzer grenadiers as well. There you go. T 34 from 6 out of here for Chiefs and Katsu. Another push being prepared here for the center. Noting neither player really has any artillery, no mortars, no nothing. Up north, you can see me hit a mine there. Pony's been blasted by the. My engineer's been blasted by the panzer 4. T 34 is moving in here though. Shot wrecked the sandbags. T-34 bounces off the Panthers' frontal arm in the south. here point being grabbed there. Conscripts advance in the center. Guessing another Panther Fall here, which obviously would be a very good addition here for Kalyan in general. Noting, of course, most Gunnadiers are now ace level. Also worth noting, no ambush camouflage. I will say, Gunnadiers for light machine guns really benefit a lot from ambush camouflage. Particularly to the high levels of veterans, you can actually land to like quickly land some. Pretty imposing strikes and so did infantry. Field gun for Chiefs and can't help deal with the Panther 4. Excellent addition there, of course. Bit of skirmish with the Panther 4 and the Guardsman. T-54 could try and flank around, but there you go. Pack 40 protects against such an eventuality. Good set up there by Canyon. Plenty of man being floated by him, by the way. They almost got a wipe here on the Conscript Squad again, but he does manage to get them out of there before they get turned into German target practice. Yeah, Kalyan's really starting to feel a lot of manpower. Could easily go for another Panther 4 now, and I definitely think that'd be a great idea. More to would also be a solid idea, then go along with the Panther 4, some Stormtroopers or Panzer Grenadiers, but... I definitely think he should be going for more armor. There we go. And should even then still go going for, be going for something else. Also, more Pioneers would also be a really good idea there, as he's moving into two tanks, at which point you really want more than one Pioneer squad. But there you go. Counting these going from Stormtroopers here. Two thumbs up. So good. Panther for Southwards. Just bring that T 34 from 6. Second Panther for almost done there. There we go. Marking the Panther for for death. Field him up the flank. Aggressive play there by. Chiefs and cuts and there you go, flanking the Panther 4 there. Great shot there. Panther 4 going for it as well there. Good chance of that Panther 4 going down here. Devious counter maneuver here by 
Jason Katz almost got the pentacle, but he does narrowly survive. Really close call here. Max Mark on the 78. She's uh, counting, clearly not ready for that. Finds most Vintage here, halted and pretty much in packing here. Second pentacle ready. Still no artillery here from either side. Pack being caught here, field and bombarding. Good chance of losing the pack, in particular because it gets caught on negative cover, meaning it takes even more damage. And there he goes, that's about destroying the pack for doing grabs it. Both of which would honestly be not great for Kalyan, but obviously losing the pack 40 to his opponent would be the worst thing. Because then it becomes a six man pack 40, which is an absolute nightmare to deal with in general. Panda 4 then needs to get hauled out of there though. Keeps at it though, he refuses to yield here to the Marxists up north here. Consequently, Wing Forge could rush down with the Stormtroopers there while he's not paying attention and going Samex, but. I imagine Kalyan is currently just so caught up here in the southern engagement. He's missing out on these opportunities up north to really hit the contrast. They got the sandbags ready. They got the fuel pump running neutral. Now they're going to use the move, but the both Pantafors can assist the engage. At least Kalyan is going for more engineer style. That is definitely something. Meanwhile, Chiefs and Kats are bringing in more field guns. Obviously, wherever there are more German tanks, in which case having more field guns out is obviously going to be a really handy investment. Back here for Canyon, not much further going on. Yo, well second pioneer is quite ready, can they quickly fix that up? And then the other panda foot, which point you can then start getting more aggressive again up north here. Comes there, caught by the stormtroops, also hit a booby trap here. Tactical advance popping here. Chance of wipe there is definitely not impossible, but fortunately for Chiefson Cutter, the RNG was slightly on his side there. And there you go, quick sprint here. Thumbs up to Kalyan, gets up close effectively with the Stormtroopers. Excellent play, they're going to run into the building with a pop and incendiary grenade, but just stand at the front door, at which point they're going to do a lot of damage anyways for the door if this console can't hit back. Go, push down the open, and this is the power of the MP40. No, no, German Assault Troop, particularly veteran ones, did seem to prefer the PPSH-41 in part because they were more likely to have to get their hands on it, I think is a crucial element there, but it did pack a lot more raw firepower. But again, I think part of it is just they could get their hands on them because the MP-40, like, you know, while they did technically had a bunch of them, it just mostly had enough to, like, equip their squad leaders and officers with them and not so much, like, you know, larger formations on paper with that, so... My understanding is that basically a lot of the time, like, you know, more ad hoc assault units were basically sort of equipped with captured submachine guns, which primarily would have been the Soviet PPZ 41. Or the British Sten gun. And before they're good to go, gonna use a bit of trouble here with the T 3476. All them pumping seats, they can't retreating. And this is the Maxim. Southern point that being ceased. Pants moving forward for Canyon. T for the advancing grenadiers. Straight ahead of a Canyon. If he's going to go over that, I would definitely strongly recommend a Morty to, like, you know, bombard but also provide smoke screen to make it harder here for Keith and Cat to use his field guns versus Canyon's Panther Force. There we go. Bit of a death zone here for his tanks. Almost was the Panther Force there, in fact. Really close call. So, yeah, Mortar would be an excellent addition if a can, of course, he'd also go for another Panda 4 and a Mortar at the same time. So, I think that's actually what he should be doing here. Like, Mortar, Panda 4, I think, could allow Canyon to, like, maybe crack here, Canyon center open like an egg. Instead, he's going for the Maxim here. I mean, that's also a pretty handy addition, honestly. And particularly gets his ambush camouflage, though. In this case, quick to grab it back. Not the looks of it. Yep, white. And destroy it then. The Pentacle for Kalyan, still no mortars though. Kind of got in the alpha. And I think Jason Katza is actually stalling for the IEU 152, which is pretty rare in a 1v1 match. Ooh, white, look under these, the machine gun dropped. Kalyan is quick to pick it up here. So, it'll be interesting to see how Kalyan responds to the IEU 152 because. In the current set meta game, they are insanely rare for 1v1s. I mean, 2v2s definitely fairly common, but 1v1s 
Like the elephant, they just did a massive and kind of impractical, though at least the ice shoe has a bit more utility than the elephant due to its ability to switch between high explosive and armor piercing. Now the maximum effort she sent cuts in the Red Army. Pantafors need repairs. We got the third one out there, forming now an understrength Pantafor platoon here for Kalyan. Now the maximum on the way there, but otherwise does seem to be heading towards the ISU 152. Map control back in Chieston cuts his hands. Again, despite Count taking him more infantry and armor, he's not quite able to wield it effectively versus Chieston cuts it. Partly, I think he'll focus on the center here. Should have flanked more, I think, around through here or tried to push through here instead of like trying to, you know, attack through here with no mortars to support him. I think that was tactically a bit of a bad idea. And I think Chieston cuts, of course, faking that's going to happen again. It's starting to lay down a lot more mines, which means if Kalyan tries it again, it's going to get even more painful. But if does look like he's realizing he's at Norfords instead. And so I think, of, yeah, if we can even see he's starting to cover against that potential Northern flank route, though, they're still potentially here to go through. Or, you know, bring in minesweepers to scoop ahead, sweep ahead of time. But some considerations there, anyways, tactically, as what to do in these situations. Getting very close to the ISU 152 again in a 1v1 matchup. And the famous approach is also. Not necessarily what I think of, you know, as an ISU 152 map, but then admittedly, I can't really think of any of the 1v1 maps as an ISU 152 map. So I'd say it's a pretty bold and pretty interesting decision by Chi San Katsu. Like if you can make it work, it obviously can be quite devastating, but it's only going to be a bit of a challenge, I think. But not impossible. Can cause Pantable Sydney repairs. We got another Storm Subscribe out there. Very nice. Also pushing up to five squads of infantry again. Give some more MP40s. Which can certainly put some harm there in Chiefs and Cuts. Ultra 3 Pantables get the repaired out. I mean, you could like go for a breakthrough attack to actually like clear out the ISU 152 by swarming it. Sort of taking it out there by bypassing it. We'll of course have to see if he does that. Either way, ISU 152 out here for. Chisan Katsu. North Heat T-34 being fixed up. As the name hints at, he was equipped with a 152mm gun. There was also the ISU-122, which was sort of more designed like a heavy tank destroyer. Compared to this one, it's just a heavy assault gun. You also, of course, had the SU-100, which had a high-velocity 100mm gun, which is quite powerful. I believe the Soviets called it the end of F and everything, though, crucially, that one only arrived very late into the war. But yeah, ISU 152 here definitely challenged, particularly with all the mines. Like, again, his best bet would be like make a breakthrough push and get past it, but Fieldman's come out the flank here, plus the mines in front makes such an endeavor here quite painful for Kalyan. And he's not sweeping for mines here either. Again, the lack of mortars thing is dying to prove to be a bit of a hindrance here for Kalyan. Bit of a hindrance. Ice shoots, fired high cluster shell there. Which technically would actually done actual heavy damage to the real Panther 4 in the actual war there, but end game that obviously be a bit too good. Bit of a standoff here, but it's one that favors Chiefs and Cats. We also got more Samex being dug in. Here, Storms are being used, I think, in parts as scouts here. Not a bad idea there. Creeping up. There we go. But still, needs Minesweepers on the job there. Now he's going for it. Man should dodge several of the mines there. Mines going off the gun these there. Ice shoots going to need to get out of the building. Schnell. Maximal thing, but the storms would be a really nice ambush there with the storm so was, you know, flank assault there. But yeah, as you might notice, overall still a lack of like you know momentum support here for the attack. It just sort of like ends up not going particularly much of anywhere. Getting chased and cuts more time to bring up forces up north of Pentacles, the guards from up there. Moves up with the parties with minesweepers now, but a bit late there to the party. In the south, stormtroopers going to use the pentafall down watch as well. As I think, a bit of a hesitancy from County to try to figure out, I think, how to particularly crack this Marxist nut. 
But it's one that's proving to be quite tough to break here. I think part of the issue again is just a lack of mortars here from Chis and Carter. Again, I do... I've, I've been from Cam, but also I do think having several storm supports on the ready could actually make it easier to break if he had the mortars. Much easier, but oh well. Chis and Carter trying to push southwards. There we go. Another unit wiped here. Another can leave squad obliterated by the ISU-152 here. Both of them in the south here. They're actually like... The is actually vulnerable now to like a mass panzer push because the field guns won't be able to like immediately move in. As you can see that Kalyan is quite conservative now here, he's much more hesitant and he's much more willing I think to just concede ground here against Chiefs and Kata under current circumstances, partly because the ISU double field gun combo can be fairly difficult to deal with if you can't, you know, get a good shot in or good flank in because the ISU can just deal with infantry support weapons and the anti-tank guns can just deal with, you know, tanks. But also because the Mabad also deal with any support weapons. They can like really overlap something in a very nasty way there. And this regard female approach could arguably be said to be then somewhat of an ISU friendly map because again it makes it very difficult for the opponent to flank around easily. The loss of some squad there, Kalyan is really sad to hurt here. He's also gone for tier 4. Don't think that's gonna help too much here. Do not think that's going to help too much. He's now grabbing north side where Chiefs can cut to clearly doesn't give much of a rat's ass about things. In part because he's now got sort of more defensible position here, using the road essentially as a barrier. Trying to wreck sandbags. So he's just trying to wreck the building. I think he might be looking to wreck this building so the county can't infiltrate stormtroopers into it. Got me wrong there. Yep, there we go. Building down. We got 361, 145. Cannon's really short on infantry now. You go for another Panther 4, you go for Stoogs. The problem is going to be like any armor push here without sufficient infantry support. It's just going to like wreck by the mines and the field guns. It's like Chiefs and Carter starting to switch forces north. It's looking to deal with the German incursion there. Stormtroopers hiding out there, not shabby. Panzer force repositioning. Also got the heavy panzer core up here. Will it be a strong panzer, panzer of effort, or panther? Well, he can go for the panzer of effort, but it's not showing much of any interest in that. Of course, another option is with the second beach try and set up for close the pocket. Of course, that does require more munitions than he currently has, but in theory, he could try and set up for that. Which case you could maybe like really deliver a crashing blow that achieves some cuts again. Meanwhile, so player of course bringing another T-34-6. I shoot, shoot, engages. Pioneers are getting absolutely pummeled into the dirty. North here, point being seized with the T-34-6. Great use of the ability there. Thumbs up. Increasing the bleeding on Canyon, who definitely seems a bit frozen here now. He is really trying, I think, to figure out how to like just you know break Chiefs and Katz's position but I think with this current force composition it's going to be really really tough like I don't think he needs packs he needs more to help deal with the dark and infantry but also the field guns and I think going for a pack 40 just presents an easy target at this point for the ISU but also the field guns and so also just been having a hard time to like support like any assault against Chiefs and Katz efficiently so not so super salt on that one right now. Also looks like he might be planning a panther here. I uh, weigh the assault going off here now. Attacking from two points here. At least preparing two prongs. Up north here, storms are being pushed back by the conscripts. Gundy's moving in there. No minesweepers to support the advance here. And the got ice shoot there. Lands a great hit there. But now pushes forward slowly again. Nope. Doesn't quite push forward aggressively. Just probing a bit there lightly now. The only going to go in the panda for there. Of course, due to all the mines, like just any attempt, like just dive right past the ISU-150 is going to be very, very painful and difficult for Kalyan, apparently. Does look like he's playing a panther here. I panzer Kampfwagen 5. Though I am less certain that's going to end up mattering at this rate. South East Pani's been caught with the T-34-6 and are quickly routed here. Main guns, machine guns just blaring into them, and there you go. Almost wiped another Pioneer Squad here. 
Pantful going for it, engaging the eyes, shoot pack 40 joining as well. That Pantful takes it in return. T-34 is charging for it here for the Red Army. Pantafall's opening the T-34 from 6. I shoot down to almost half health. Pantafall, though, knocked out here. And the Glenners get wiped out. The cannons casualties are piling up. The sheer, I think, lack of momentum here. And smoke is making it very easy for Chiefs and Carter to defend against any maneuvers now Count's committing to. It does feel like in some regard he's just lost his faith in victory against Chiefs and Carter. In fact, he might even just dropped out at this point. Yeah, it does look like we're just waiting for the game track to the fact he's left. Shame, but that is how these things go from time to time. But really, the impressive comeback from Chiefs and Carter against Callion. I think thing is just playing to the strengths here, but also engaging Kalyan smartly. Kalyan, on the hand, really would have benefited from Mortar, I think, to play out smartly. But he also, I think, at times, relied too much on Brute Force, should have liked one maneuver. And I think, had he done that again, I probably could have won the match here. So, oh, well, the good work with Chisun Katsa. Hope you enjoyed this match and learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it. Tell a friend, tell a family, but don't tell enemies. This is Imperial Links in Cheers. Thank you for watching. I'm sure tomorrow again for another episode. Bye.